Welcome to Hufu Adventures. I first met Dr. Ben Benulis on November 4th, 2018 at the Southwest Veg Fest. After I heard him speak, I went up and introduced myself to him, and since then we've become friends. When I heard that Dr. Ben would be speaking on autoimmune disease at the Pomegranate Cafe, I knew I wanted to hear him speak again. So I recorded his presentation. I've divided it into two parts. This is part one, where he tells his own personal story of how he experienced autoimmune disease. In part two, he goes on to talk about recovering from autoimmune disease. Now let's hear Ben. So welcome to Recovering from Autoimmune Disease. I'm Dr. Ben Benoulis, author of the Autoimmune Recovery Blueprint. Before we get started, I'd like to tell you guys a little bit about me and how I came to be here. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. So. Ten years ago, I was working as an engineer in the microchip industry. I was basically just some guy sitting in a cubicle. And uh, I've been healthy my whole life up until that point in my late 20s and started to notice small problems. The beginning of 2010, it started out small. It was just like, oh, I ate a meal that didn't quite agree with me. Uh, I started noticing I was fatigued before the end of the work day. I was having to drink like a second Mountain Dew at 3 o'clock to get through the work day. And started noticing like stuff on my hands that wasn't going away. And I um, started noticing that I wasn't recovering from workouts as well. And nothing had really changed in my life, but over the course of a few months, these symptoms that started out small got really bad. Uh, it started to be that after every meal I ate, it felt like it was World War III. Anybody relate to that? Uh, started to uh, have eczema on my hands, like some kind of skin rash, something that went from like top of the first knuckle to like middle of the hand, and it was just terrible there and nowhere else. But it was so bad, I didn't want to shake people's hands. I didn't want people to see my hands. I wouldn't do public speaking, but I would definitely like be here with my hands in my pockets. Please don't look at my hands. Uh, started having muscle pain just pretty much constantly, all the time. Whether I worked out or not, I was just, my body always felt sore. I was very inflamed. And uh, my chronic fatigue got to the point where I was sucking down like, three Monster Energy drinks a day just to just to get through the work day. Like, just to do life. And then I was sleeping most of the weekends. So I was just so worn out and fatigued. And uh, really started to affect my life in a lot of other ways. Like, I really couldn't go out and be social because I was just tired all the time. I didn't want to go out and eat at a restaurant because my digestion was like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't want to be like, you know, rolling on the floor like, oh, no, no, not again. And, um, and the hand thing was just, just really weird. I didn't, didn't know what to do. So I finally, you know, as a, as a red-blooded American male, decided to go to the doctor uh, to figure out, like, something must be wrong. I didn't know. I WebMD'd all this stuff and nothing really made any sense. And so I said, oh, okay, so you got stomach issues, you got skin stuff, and you got um, chronic pain. So I got referred to a dermatologist for my skin, got referred to a rheumatologist for all the chronic pain I was in, got referred to a gastroenterologist for all the digestive issues I was having. So now it goes from one doctor to four of them, right? And you're going to this guy, and you're going to that guy, and one of them's putting you on one medication, another one's putting you on another medication. And here's the thing, like, no one's talking to each other. They're all just kind of focused on their zone. And no one is looking at the big picture of like, why is all this happening in the first place? And of course, I was at, you know, it's a level of consciousness about it where I was just like, this is what you do. You got three different things going on. You, you just, you go to three different people, right? Like. That's just how it works. And much to my dismay, 
uh, the medications I got put on made me worse. They gave me like a steroid cream to put on my hands, but it would work for a little while, and then the, you know, the skin condition would come flaring back. The uh, digestion, if anything, got worse. None of this is really working. I'm getting frustrated. Like, my life, I'm in all this chronic pain, I'm not feeling well, no one can really seem to do tell me what's going on, but my GI doctor is telling me, oh, well, it doesn't matter what you eat, like that doesn't affect this. And at first I took him at his word. I was like, oh, well, oh, you know, the doctor says that what I'm eating doesn't affect my digestive problems that I'm having, right? Like there's this tube that runs through your body, right? And it goes from here all the way out the other end. And the inside of that tube is diseased and inflamed and, and irritated. And the only thing that passes through that tube is the food that you eat, yet somehow we're told to believe that um, the only thing that passes through this tube doesn't cause the problem that's on the inside of the tube. And eventually I just thought, you know, I'm not a rocket surgeon, but like, what if he's wrong? Like, what if? Like, maybe. I'm the rare case where like the food I'm eating has something to do with it. So I went and I and I got a uh, food allergy test, and just to see, just to know. I thought I'm not, I can't be possibly allergic to any foods. Like I would have known, right? Growing up as a kid, I was in my late 20s at that point, and the food allergy test comes back like two weeks later, and I'm like calling the lab every day. What's what's the news? What's the good word? And. Uh, Finally, the doctor calls back on a Friday afternoon. He's like, I know you've been waiting for the results, so here they are. Well, we tested all these foods on uh, a scale of one to seven, which I don't know where they came up with that. <laughs> uh, but you scored a seven for the following foods. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, so there's just like a few, and we'll just, like, I'm finally getting the information. And he just rattles off this laundry list of food. He's like, well, you're allergic to wheat. You're allergic to soy, you're allergic to burgers, you're allergic to corn, you're allergic to milk, you're allergic to casein, you're allergic to gluten. The guy's just like, like okay, when does this end? <laughs> when does it stop? And so I said, like, okay, so, um, you know, that's the diagnosis. So I asked the guy, well, what medication are you going to give me? Because that was the level of consciousness I was at the time. It was like, you're the doctor. You diagnosed me with this condition. Now there must be a medicine that fixes said problem, right? So I can go back to just doing what I'm doing. And uh, he said, oh no, there's no medication for this, sir. You have to cut these foods out of your diet. And it was like a giant, like record scratch. Like, I have to, I have to, I have to what? That was pretty sobering news for me that uh, that would have to happen. So at first I just basically just started eating like the, the gluten-free, dairy-free versions of the processed foods I was already eating. And uh, grocery bill immediately doubled and had to be one of those people that shops in the health food store and like, gets all this stuff that tastes like cardboard, costs way more. And then make me feel any better. You know, there's got to be a lazy way to do this. You know, like, maybe I can make smoothies. Because a blender is a lot like a microwave, right? <laughs> like, you open the door, you swoosh the food in, you close the door, you push a button, and then like a minute later, bam, your food's ready, right? So uh, that was just, that was uh, pure laziness. I decided to do that. And um, so I'm starting, I'm just taking whatever produce is in the fridge and throwing it in the blender and like hoping it tastes good, right? Half the time it's like hold the nose and knock back. And I got this idea like, okay, well maybe there's like recipes. Like maybe there's a way to make it taste good consistently. Because this is like, this is actually working out pretty good. Like I'm starting to feel better. And uh, so I. Googled smoothie recipes on YouTube, and that was like just falling down a rabbit hole. And that was just that was like the start of the journey. So it took me about say after a month of like really hitting the fruits and vegetables hard and like getting enough sleep and all that, that I started to see my disease condition improve. And I think by the time 
I hit about three months. Pretty much the expo is gone. Had way more energy. Uh, chronic pain was a thing of the past. That went away in like two weeks. Once the inflammation drained out of my body, pain was gone. Digestion improved drastically when I was basically just eating stuff that grew out of the ground and off the trees. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed Ben's story. Stay tuned for part two where he talks about recovering from autoimmune disease. See you next time.